welcome Gerald Basson, leader of UKIP. Well, what do you make of Mrs May flying over here on a private jet last night to offer herself and our country to Mr Juncker? I've been apologising to my colleagues for the past 24 hours because I think the woman is a national embarrassment to the UK. I think it's Brino, Brexit in name only. I don't think we're going to be leaving. What, what's your take? Well, thanks for having me on, Janice. Happy to be here. Um, I'm smiling, Janice, but it's, you laugh or cry. It's now gone beyond the national humiliation. This woman has no concept of national pride or patriotism. This is just the latest stunt in a long, protracted sellout of the referendum result. I mean, nothing surprises me. It still shocks me, but it doesn't surprise me. This is about not really leaving the European Union. And how can you negotiate with somebody when you've already told them that whatever they do, you're still going to keep coming back asking for more. It's like an abusive relationship, isn't it? You know what? Yeah. I mean, the person yeah. can't break away from the other person, the abusive part of it. Um, it's all about making it not happen. I mean, I remember, I'll tell you a story, when I, on the 23rd of, Ju of June 2016, the referendum, next morning, early hours, very early in the morning, we all turned up at Parliament Green. It was a big celebration, you know. I went back to my office and my assistant said to me, why are you so miserable? You've just achieved, a, been part of a great victory. I said, because they're going to betray it. And this is what they're going to do. And I, I actually wrote a little book about this in 2014, The Road to Freedom. And I said, if there is a referendum, if leave win, this is what they're going to do. They will delay it, they will impede it, and they will overturn it. And I'm very, very sorry to say, I get no pleasure out of this at all in being able to say I told you so because I understood our own treacherous political class and this place, the European Union, so I understood what they were going to do. Uh, we've had the delay and impede and we're now at the overturning stage. And I think the plan is to have, if they can't stop it altogether, they will have a, a leaving in name only deal where you might as well as not have bothered and then a year or two down the line, general election, both parties under the first past the post system will say, terrific mistake, we shouldn't have left, we're going back in. And do we trust her that um, this, this backstop guarantee under an international agreement, I mean, you and I know what happens with these agreements. It would be lodged with the UN or other, some other supranational mm. unelected body and then will it be kept in for decades while the lawyers actually well, make the money out of it? Yeah, I mean, how... Which court, as I understand it, is that if we feel that they're not adhering to this agreement, we can take them to court. OK, which court is that then? Is that the Court of Justice of the European Union, which I think had cases backed up seven years? Now, I'm sure if they wanted to do something for their benefit, they'll do it in 24 hours. If it's something not to their benefit, they'll string it out for as long as possible. And how can you have the government of a supposedly free and sovereign country going to court because they feel some agreement hasn't been met? This is a treaty. Treaties are agreements between governments, uh, in, in, in our case the monarch and another government. They have no force in law. A treaty only has force in law when it's incorporated into Acts of Parliament and Acts of Parliament can be repealed. If we're going to have some treaty, what is essentially a treaty agreement and we feel someone else is breaking it, we walk away from it. History is littered with treaties that have been abandoned because they didn't work anymore, because they are just agreements between countries or sovereigns. Uh, and we should certainly have walked away from this one a long, long time ago. This, whole, this, this piece of paper is as worthless as the piece of paper that Neville Chamberlain brought back from Munich in 1938. So if it's as worthless as you say it is, then it's not really an issue. They can vote in the House of Parliament, House of Parliament this evening, the MPs just vote it through and we start the Brexit process mm. and then we can get out of it. Why is the ERG of Jacob Street, mm. Rees Morg, etc., now opposing this deal? What's well, going on? Uh, it's, it's, uh, it is worthless, but only so long as you have a, a patriotic government and House of Commons that recognise that and are prepared to do something about it. And ours are not. We have a, a predominantly treasonous and treacherous political class running our country now with a few people who actually probably genuinely want to leave, uh, but those few people will always go along with their party anyway. When push comes to shove, the Tories will always back the Tory party because the survival of their party is more important than anything else, including the survival of their country. Yeah. And I don't, th I don't believe they'll eject her either. I mean, there's talk about leadership bids, etc. They can't actually have a leadership bid. She has to stand down. And this woman's Teflon coated and she well, has no sense of responsibility. And, um, 
and, and the damage that she's done to our country. So she's going to be there for the long term. Yeah, I mean, the rest of the Tory party don't want to get rid of her because if you haven't got her, who, who do you have? You have one of these supposed Eurosceptics. Well, that's the last thing they want, isn't it? A Boris Johnson or a Rhys Mogg or a David Davis who might actually really want us to leave. That's the last thing the Tory party wants. So they'll keep Mrs May in place for as long as it takes for us not to leave. <laughs> It's but having, having said that, let me end on a positive note, can I, on this, Janice, because although the whole thing's been betrayed and was always intended to be betrayed, so long as the British people want to leave, that can be accomplished. It doesn't matter what agreements, what treaties, what supposedly legal binding things are in place. Uh, if a people want to be free, then they cannot be stopped but they need people running their government who actually are of the same persuasion. The only thing that's holding us back in the UK is our completely um, biased electoral system, the first-past-the-post system, which is a conspiracy to keep Labour and Tory in and everybody else out. One of our key policies in UKIP is to reform the electoral system for a proportional representation system. Then we could be in it like Italy. A few years ago, Matteo Salvini was in our group here in the EF, uh, what was then the um, he's still Independence here. and he's, Democracy. His Labour Party is still part His of party's still here, but he then got elected to his own parliament. He's now the man responsible for cutting illegal immigration to the EU for Italy by about 90 odd percent, yeah. so I believe. Yeah. And of course, Austria yeah. is in government as well, That's and right. they're part of our Because our they coalition. have proportional representation mm. voting system. We're going to battle for that in the UK because we would get rid of this treacherous political class. And whether it be UKIP or somebody else, whatever parties we get elected, will be reflect what people actually want. And that will be a, uh, that's the only way ahead, as far as I can see, for our country. Otherwise, it's democracy's dead anyway in our country. It's a charade. It's a pretense. Well, no, I still like to hold on to the to, to the thought that the people the people will change things, and, and you, the people can change things because they can be with us. At, from 4 p.m. on the 29th of March, our Freedom Day, yeah. and we will be celebrating on the bang, on the bongs, like metaphorically speaking, because Big Ben isn't actually chiming at the moment, but 11 p.m. we get our Freedom Day no matter what. And I, we urge people, come and join us, come and join Gerard, come and join me, come and join all the Brexiteers, and we start in is it Parliament Square or is it Trafalgar uh, Square? I think we're starting on in. Well, it's it's outside Parliament, so it's Parliament. It's, it's the Parliament Square and it's College Green, that whole area. I think there's going to be a lot of people there, and of course we'll either be celebrating leaving, or not quite really leaving, or not leaving at all. In which case it'll be a protest, but be there anyway.